I'm a nerd of the word. Let's see. It is. We are Fix Your Electronics time. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Wednesday night live stream. The buttons are all up. We are live. You are here. Thank you so much for being here. I love this. We haven't even started talking about the topic, and there are people already sharing their wonderful opinions on <laughs> commonly purchased awesome. fish yeah. that can be a little bit uh, a little bit troublesome. We'll and yes, the thumbnail, Wally and Jilly, that is the striped Raphael catfish. That is our <laughs> Raphael catfish. It is the oldest fish we have in the fish room. And I didn't really, I don't know actually why I use that thumbnail because. The striped Raphael is actually not a, a fish that I worry about too much, uh, although it does get quite large. But it's been an outstanding fish for us for 57 years. About 15 years. Those fish can live an abnormally, hugely long time. So uh, the fish that was on the thumbnail, yeah, that's the striped Raphael cat. Nice thing is it's got a little, a relatively small mouth, so it doesn't, it can't eat tons of other types of fish. Now, any fish that would fit inside of its mouth, yeah, for sure. And they can get really, really, really plump because they like to go crazy and eat a lot. And sometimes they, they hide a lot, although ours doesn't tend to hide anymore. It's just like, yeah, I'm out here. But that fish actually had to move. It was in our 150. And we broke down the 150 this past week. And then we, I moved that fish into the 125 with our Vieja. And it's fitting in great. And the Vieja are just like, oh, this is a rather large fish you just put in here with us. Thanks a lot. And they're all getting along really well. So that's the deal with the thumbnail fish. You are correct in your identification. You don't need to see his identification. <laughs> uh, and Leslie was like, yeah, I love my striped Raphael catfish when I see him. Yeah, ours would... It, it's the craziest fish. It would go missing, not missing, but it would it would be not visible for a couple months on end, wouldn't eat, and then I thought something was wrong. I thought it was sick, and then it would go and eat like crazy. It was almost like a seasonal thing, and now I think it's just be like, yeah, I'm going to eat every single day all the time, and that's what it does. So as always, videos that have come out this week, things, places we're going to be, videos that came out on Sunday, 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 was the 125, the Geophagus Paradise Tank. It was my first attempt to use wood in an aquarium and try to make it look halfway decent. And, and I will say again, you had already kind of put it on the ground a certain way, I believe, or maybe it was I on did, the stand. It was, well, it was lined up on the, on the ground, but it's not... It wasn't lined up like that. No, it was, but it gave me, it inspired an idea like, you know what, let me try to make it kind of look a certain way. And I got to do that and place some rocks right. in there. And you kind of were like, mm, yeah, and help had me move a couple rocks. And then you glued everything together in that aquarium. You did all the planting 100% because that is not my thing. I'm With not the there plants yet. that you wanted in there. True. So anyway, and the plants that we have. If you haven't seen that particular video yet, that was the one that came out on Sunday, check it out because I think it's pretty cool. And it is tank number two of the five that we are putting up in the gallery. We still have three more to go. We haven't 100% decided, although I think you want to do the next 125 next. I do. The second of the two 125s where I'm fine with that. But we also have to completely redo the 50-gallon low boy that is in the center. Of, well, it's not in the center of the fish room. We need to move it to the center of the fish room. And that tank is going to be completely redone. And then we have the other 75, but I'm waiting. There's going to be a 3D background in that tank, and I'm waiting for that. I just got notification that it was complete. They sent me the pictures. They said, is this good before we ship it? I looked at it, I'm like, perfect. So... They are in the process of shipping that 3D background, and now that's coming from Aqua Decor, and they're in Serbia, so it's it's going to take a little while. It's taking quite the trip to yeah. get here. And I'm really excited about it because from the pictures, it looks like they did an outstanding job, and I can't wait to get that in the aquarium and show everybody what is going on there. And I normally am not a huge fan of the 3D background uh, backdrops. I, I just think it really limits you, and it kind of gives like a very, this is the end of the tank sort of look. However... This one that you showed me is a little different, and I'm actually a little excited about it. Well, and the reason it's different is because you had an idea, and you said, hey, can it look yeah. like this? And I was like, let me see. And sure enough, uh, we could get it to look the way you wanted it to, yeah. which is going to offer, in a sense, 
less 3D-edness, but offer more 3D-edness. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. a conundrum wrapped up in a riddle, all <laughs> enveloped <laughs> in an enigma. Yes. Okay, so anyway, I'll that was that Sunday's subject. video. Today's video, you talked more about that aquarium on the Smallscape. I did. And you talked about some of the new things that we've added to it. So if you check out the Smallscape, you'll get a little bit more background information on the aquarium. Tomorrow's video, members' video is coming out. And then this Sunday, I've got a video already planned. It's already ready to go. I can't wait to share it with everyone. So that's the land of videos. And then where we're going to be, we are still in the middle of our nice wonderful break here between uh, we're basically moving into the second half of fish swap season so in January on the 7th what we're preparing for now is the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association swap that's in Northbrook Illinois on the 7th of January and so we're looking forward to that uh, that is coming up here pretty darn soon and then the week after that the 14th is the Quad City swap in Davenport and then we don't have another swap until the 20 so what I say, the 14th, 20, must be January the 27th, which I believe is a Saturday. That's the Greenwater Aquarius Society swap in Tinley Park. And as, for those of you who uh, are going to any one of those, you're like, hey, can we get fish and how do we order fish? The website is usually updated about four or five days before the swap so you can pre-order all the fish. And that is going to be uh, what's going on for the swaps. So. Uh, that's January, and then there's more swaps in February and March, and really the next big like fish meeting get together thing is the um, the Aquashella in Dallas next May, Dang. so third week of May, uh, and that's that's the big one. So I'm looking forward to that as well. That is going to be, be pretty fun. darn cool. Heck yeah! Now we got M and C. Oh my gosh, what did I do here? It's uh, why? Why is that? What do you do? Are Hold you trying on. to figure something out? Because I want to. I have a question for Jazzy Bell Pink. Okay. Well, you're doing my that. Raphael Nanook is all over the place. Um, did you happen to name Nanook after the dog in Lost Boys? Just asking. Oh. Just asking. Get, that's a good question. So I messed up. I can't. Sh <laughs> Look what I did. Look what. Oh, here we go. How about this? Nope, that's not going to work. That's I'm going to have to figure this out at some point. We're going to go back to there. Sorry, I know I'm messing with this now, but too bad. Anyway, I'm going to have to fix that because now I can't bring the things up on the screen because they're the font is black. Oh, and yeah. And I don't know how to change that. that. So anyway, we're going to have to go old school. Anyway, what I was going to say is thank you, MNC Aquatics, for being a member the last six months. Uh, the gallery is looking great so far. Can't wait to see it completed. It, you and I both... And we have a lot more just to do besides the aquariums. So besides the aquariums, we have, we are going to be doing stuff to the walls and we've got a lot of other things to kind of add in there. So uh, we are really excited about that. Can't wait to do that. Le you know what I'm going to do? Hold what on, I have do? an idea. Okay. So I'm going to do something here and I'm going to change some things around. Sure. Uh, we're going to go way over here hold on I wanted to say hi to all our moderators here what's up everybody we've got wink we've got second floor hey y'all we've got lynn too so thanks to all of our awesome moderators the best Very in the cool. world now i'm going to try something else here because i i changed some things over here okay. let me see if it worked i don't know if it did or not so no it didn't gosh darn it all the heck just wanted to say thanks to andy for the super chat really appreciate it i have andy. an abuna problem they are breeding like crazy what can i add to reduce the baby population uh. great question so with the imbuna if they are breeding like crazy what i have found is if they are in a mixed imbuna community don't pull the females and let them spit them out in the tank and they will often become fish food for other fish in the aquarium and you'll never even know when that's happened it's not like you're going to see all the babies come out and then all the other fish are be like oh delicious so it's not like some you know horrible thing like that it would be horrible that would be and <laughs> that's not what we're <clears throat> trying to do well, I have a dry throat. I was going to say, I've got Pardon cough me. drops here just in case. <laughs> there we go. That's better. So anyway, yeah, that is what I would do. Otherwise, you can put in some type of, oh, I don't know, Cynodonis cat. You know, if you have some kind of a feather fin Cynodonis or some calvus or compressiceps, those will make your baby fish no longer... Um, happening so 
Yeah, that is... What, hold on a second here. What is going on here? Jazzy Bell Pink did name did name him after Nanook in oh, that's Lost cool. Boys. That is cool. That's a yeah. fun bit of trivia. Fun movie. I want to see that. Like, uh, So I don't know. I again. pressed a button here. Way to go. Hold on. Unpublished changes. Current scene has... Un- All right. We're going to do this. I don't know what's going to happen here. Boom. All right. We're back to live. And... Hi, Noel. <laughs> we're back to live. Now, I'm going to try another thing here real quick, and it's still not working, but I'm sorry about the Super Chat. It's not popping up on the screen. I just got this brand new toy, and it's coming up in black font against a black background. But anyway, 904, thank you very much for the Super Chat. This channel has really gotten me into fish keeping as someone who wants to keep Cory cats. Can can I keep smaller types of plecos with Corys? Usually, yeah. Usually it works out okay. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of a skirmish for food at the bottom, but... For the most part, it works out okay. So I would say have fun with it. Try it. As long as the the tank is is of the proper size, uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue here. So I have an idea. You go ahead and talk a little bit. Hey, James. Yeah. uh, Belated Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year to you and yours in beautiful Florida. Awesome. And Whip's here. All right. The party can start. Very cool. Whoops, world's in the Keep house. going. Keep talking. I'm, I'm working on some things, okay? Cool. So I'm trying. Whip is finishing up a movie. I'll join you soon. What movie? Oh, that didn't work. Come on, Whip. Guess what movie? Oh, my gosh. One of the gifts that I got for Christmas from his aunt and uncle. What did They're you the get? Best. I got, I asked for like a couple of um, Hitchcock movies because I love Hitchcock. And I don't have any any of the movies. And I got a box set. It's a beautiful, like, velour box set. It's so, so I had this guy right over here and our youngest, Eli. I said, hey, you guys want to check out a Hitchcock movie? Do you want to watch Rear Window? Because it's cool. And, uh, yeah, they watched it last night. And I said, hey, next step hey. can maybe be, I think a next a good next step would be Vertigo. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I think so. Because I myself have never seen Psycho all the way through. I've seen all like the, I like to watch the how-tos or the, uh, the, the background movies, you know, how Hitchcock did it, you know, all that good stuff. But um, I've never seen that one all the way through. And um, I haven't seen The Birds since like probably like 35 years. And uh, yeah, so. Look what I did. I fixed it. <gasps> and what a beautiful color. Thank you so much. Did you much. make it my favorite color on purpose? I uh, I don't know. I just picked a color that was going to be bright and go along with the background. So thank you so much for that talking. Now Pretty. we do have a we do have a topic I want to get into today, and that is uh, what's our topic for today? By North the way, by Northwest is good too. Um, it is um, fish you got to watch out for. Yeah, common fish you kinda. you have to kind of watch out for because they sometimes will mess up your tank, and I think it's just one of those things where, yeah, these are fish. Now again, the the big thing here is that these are commonly sold fish. And so I know I saw in the chat, some of you were coming up with some, by the way, some really legit suggestions on fish you got to watch out for because they are sold in pet stores and maybe they're not the best choice for a lot of people. But here we wanted to stay with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we're going to do a top 10 plus one fish. You just want to be a little bit careful about because sometimes they will cause some problems that you're not necessarily expecting. So, fishy number one. And let's see here. Hold on a second. Let me go to my new little toy here, the screen. And that's this bad boy. Uh, Let's see if it pops up here. I just want to make sure. Yep, there we go. Uh, The red tail shark. Yeah. This is a fish. So what I've done is I've kind of sort of organized this into... Commonly available fish, and when I what I say by that is these are fish that you'll walk into the big box stores and be like, oh, there they usually are, right? You're usually available. Certainly local fish stores would have them. And these are fish where it's like, yeah, they're readily available at all your big box stores for the most part, but we got to be careful. And then this is one I think is a no-brainer, the red tail shark. Um, and really for a couple reasons. One, 
it's a very aggressive fish. Not usually when it's small. Remember how cute it was when it was small? And it would just so cute. It'd take its little mouth and it would go over all the surfaces and mind its own business. And <laughs> it looks absolutely just beautiful. Nice dark blue body with that beautiful red tail. And then, <laughs> as luck would have it, they get older. And as they get older, what happens to those little guys? Well, they get uh, they get bigger and they, uh, they get meaner. Yeah, a lot more aggressive. And I think... I did a species profile on this fish, and a lot of people are like, oh, my red-tailed shark is fine. And my question always is, how large is it? How old is it? Because usually what happens is as they get larger, and when I mean larger, five, six, ours was probably close to seven inches when I did that video, they become significantly more aggressive. And I mean they will pick on small and medium south and Central American cichlids. They will pick on most other bottom dwellers, most pretty much all community fish are going to be a problem. They will chase around schools of tetras and all kinds of stuff. When I've had good luck with this fish is when I had it in, to give you an idea, it was in a, an aquarium with a green severum. I think there was some type of, of larger like blue opaline gold garami in there, which is another one that we'll talk about in a few minutes. And there were other South and Central American cichlids in there. There was another relatively aggressive loach and that was Syncrosis birdmori. That worked out just fine, but this is a fish that I find works best when you're keeping it with other semi-aggressive fish. So be careful with this one. Again, they're really great when they're smaller, and a lot of people are like, I don't know what this dude's talking about. He's totally wrong. And then as they grow, as they age, they just something flips in their, what I call their teenage to young adult mind, where they are just like, they just love to terrorize other fish. And they are relentless about it. That's the other thing too. There are fish... A lot of you who have kept cichlids, and by the way, there are no cichlids on this list because I just assume most people know when it's a cichlid, yeah, you run the risk of having some aggression issues and they're not necessarily beginner fish, but I have had this fish absolutely terrorize other cichlids and and, and they are relentless. That's what I was going to say is they will put a fish up in the corner. And a lot of times with cichlids who are running the tank, as long as they have their middle ground space and everybody recognizes them as the, the boss of the tank, like, oh, all right, well, I'm going to leave those guys alone unless they come in my area. Red tail sharks tend not to be that way. They just keep going at them and going at them and going at them until the other fish that they're picking on doesn't exist anymore. So you just got to be really careful about that one. Anything else you want to say about the red tail? No. That's a beautiful fish, though. Absolutely it's beautiful. In the beautiful. right environment, yeah. great fish. And oh, by the way, make sure you only have one in your aquarium because they are usually extremely aggressive towards one another as well. Next one, <laughs> and I think this one is going to be, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a surprise, and here we have to be a little bit careful. We have the garami, but not just any garami because you've had some ones that you've liked. Which are, the, which are your favorites? Well, my favorite is, of course, which can be very, very mean. The sparkling grommy. I'm just kidding. No, it's not usually me. I'm Although just you got to be careful because sometimes tiny. when there there are other nano fish in the aquarium, they, they can be a little bit assertive. But no, they're yeah. not generally aggressive fish. They're I'm actually kidding. usually quite shy. I'm kidding because they're so I cute. Know. The honey grommy would be another one. That's a great Love choice. Love the honey grommy. Yeah. Uh, pearl grommy can be a really great choice, especially if you want to keep multiples. But when yeah. I say the grommy, this is again another common fish when you walk into the pet smarts and the pet coals. This fish is always there. It is basically a staple of the aquarium hobby. The, I've got a picture here. Uh, great fish, the opalines, the blues, the golds. And I've almost always had one, although right now we don't. But I almost always have one. Always name it Gary. <laughs> and does. always that fish was surprising. Not surprising because it wasn't surprising. But it's far more aggressive than you might realize. Do you remember what our gold, opaline, and blue garamis used to do when I turned the lights on in the 150? Do you remember watching them? Well, I know they'd chase all the fish around. But it wasn't just that they would chase some fish around. You've got a four-inch, five-inch gold blue opaline grimy like you're seeing on the screen. You turn the lights on without fail. I had all three of those at different times, right? So one would, would pass away after a few years, four or five years, I'd get another one. That would last you know, three to five years, get another one. Without fail, those fish would find the largest fish cichlid in the tank. Because these were the 150 was almost always a cichlid tank. And chase the cichlids around relentlessly yeah. for the first 10 minutes until the cichlid kind of woke up, got its wits about him. Like, okay, wait, hold on, dude. Like, I remember 
Our Lethronops. Opaline, the Lethronops. The Lethronops is a very large cichlid. I think that yeah. bad boy was about six or seven inches. Mm -hmm. And it would just get chased around until it woke up and like, oh, hold, 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 hold. What's, <laughs> what is chasing Excuse me? Excuse me, little one. It was like Garamis would wake <laughs> up in the worst mood ever. It would chase the Geophagus. And that Geophagus was eight, nine, ten inches at the time. And it was, the, they can be a surprisingly aggressive fish. And that was in a 150. If you've got them in a 20 or a 29 gallon, I think a lot of people are surprised by just how aggressive they can be towards other fish and certainly almost undoubtedly aggressive towards other garamis. I love them. I think they're super interesting. Uh, you just got to be careful with them. Again, it's a common fish that sometimes when you introduce it into your aquarium, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, this is a lot more than I thought I was getting in terms of an attitude. So be careful there. Again, with the garamis like these, I've had the best luck keeping them with like a red tail shark, keeping them with uh, other smaller South and Central American cichlids. Like for instance, uh, firemouth cichlids, crebenzis, uh, keyhole cichlids, curviceps, Fish that aren't overly aggressive, but at the same time, they're not prone to being chased around, fin nipped, and, and bullied uh, too extensively. And I've also kept them, I, I, they did, they wound up in an African, one wound up in an African cichlid, 150. It actually worked out great. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend that, like, oh, just go out and do it. It's not like a stocking options list, but uh, South and Central American cichlids that were medium, like Severums and stuff like that, Geophagus, Electric Blue Acara, that usually worked out okay. Now this next one, this next one, my dear. <laughs> oh, I'll never why get don't over you, this one. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and tell the class what you uh, what you wanted when we set up the seventy five gallon? I wanted them. You wanted them, and what are those? The Buenos Aires Tetra. The Buenos Aires Tetra. We and, got and, them from. Uh, well, the pet store is closed now. Yeah, it's been a long time. It yeah. was Jim's Pet World yes. in uh, Villa Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to have them. So we did. We we threw in a seventy-five gallon, and we, uh, I think at the time they had eight. I bought all eight of them, and then slowly over time, what the Buenos Aires likes to do if they're not kept in a very large group, and this again, this was in a seventy-five gallon aquarium. This is a larger tetra. I would consider it to be a larger tetra, certainly a fin nipper. Mm -hmm. Right, this is a fish that will absolutely uh, nip at the fins of long fin fish like your angels and certainly bettas and guppies, and I uh, would have a whole lot of fun doing that. But what people don't sometimes understand is, if I were keeping these fish again, I would probably do 20 to 25, in no less than a 75 gallon. And the reason is, what you often see with the Buenos Aires is this thing where it's like, okay, you got the whole group, and for a little while they're doing fine. All of a sudden, you see one of them not with the rest of the group. And you're thinking, oh, maybe that fish is sick or maybe it's just kind of hanging out on its own or they've kicked it out of the group. Well, yes and no, they've kind of kicked it out of the group, but that's only step one. <laughs> step two is eliminate the single fish that's no longer part of the group. And you're like, oh, okay, well, they eliminated that one. So maybe the rest are all going to get along. And then all of a sudden, a week or two later, you're like, oh, there's another one off by itself. Oh, there's another one that's no longer with the rest of the group and permanently Terrible. removed from the aquarium by the other remaining fish. And that keeps happening until one day you're like, I have one Bueno Series Tetra left. Now, again, there are ways around this. Uh, keeping them in a much larger group can certainly help uh, in not having long finned fish. But once again, this is a fish that is almost always available and usually sold as a fish like oh yeah keep six and at least a 20 gallon or maybe they'll say a 29 gallon you should be fine and i have found and a lot of people have found that maybe this isn't the best idea uh, long term and maybe they need a larger group and maybe they need a larger aquarium because again they are going to get on the larger side by the way i didn't put them in the description like i normally do but we've done species profiles on almost every one of the fish that we're going to mention today except for one. So if you went into if you want to learn anything about any of these fish, if you type in the fish name in Primetime Aquatics after that into YouTube, our species profiles should pop up. Uh, this next one is basically it's a repeat. So I'm not going to go over it all again, but we've we've tried this fish before. I don't know if you remember it and well not tried it. I mean, we've had it many times. The last time we tried the tiger barb that was in the 150 and we had again a group of about I don't know, eight to 10 in the four foot 150. And this is another fish. I, I love, I mean, beautiful color, right? Yeah. No doubt about it. Especially beautiful the color. Greens. Oh, yeah. The greens are absolutely awesome. 
the issue with the tiger barb is pretty much the same thing as the Buenos Aires tetra. They can be fin nippers. They can often do in a smaller group the exact same thing that the Buenos Aires tetras do to one another. And that is just slowly but surely be like, okay, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. By the way, I've kept these two fish together, the Buenos Aires and the tiger barb, and that actually worked out just fine. A lot of people, once again, don't realize how big a, a full-grown tiger barb can get. You know, when they're approaching three inches, you're like, wow. And they, they're they not a skinny fish. They're kind of a, you know, they can get a little bit of a rounder belly, especially the females. But this is one where you want to exercise a little bit of caution. People ask me all the time with the tiger barbs, you know, how would I keep them? Or how, you know, in an ideal situation, at least a 75 gallon. And I want to keep them in a group of at least 10 to 15. A larger tank would be even better. If I did a six foot tank at, you know, about at least 15 of them, that would certainly cut down on some of the problems that you have and just make sure you don't have again fish with long fins otherwise you could very well wind up with the same issue so uh there are, by the way there are a lot of other tiger barb options that are better in terms of not being so aggressive i love for instance the snakeskin barb love the snakeskin barb i think it offers a lot of awesome color we have a group in the 75 gallon right now they pretty much stay to, you know, they first of all they school relatively tightly. They kind of just stay on their own. Yeah. They're not really overly aggressive towards each other, and they ignore other fish for the most part. So I like those. Uh, we have right now the eight banded barb, the eight banded false barb, if you will. Those are cool. Really chilled out fish yeah. reminds me a lot of the rummy nose rasbora, just a not quite so hyper like the Buenos Aires tetra or like the tiger barbs are. Uh, just a really relaxed fish. Um, we've got some melon barbs right now, although those are a little bit more like a tiger barb in terms of their activity level and uh, fin nipping capabilities potentially, but uh, that's a great fish as well. So uh, cherry barbs, much, much smaller fish, but you get kind of that barb personality, but in a very toned down way. So it's really funny I, <laughs> for the uh, Buenos Aires. Um, S. Martin says uh, Buenos Aires Tetra, there can only be one. <laughs> that's per- Highlander. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much true. Uh, so true. Mac22, thank you so much for being a member of the last eight months. Morning all. Good morning. Hope you have a, had a good Christmas. Absolutely. Happy thank Christmas. you very much for hanging out with us. And I also saw Christy's been a member for the last seven months. Woohoo, seven months. Thank you for being here the last Goodness. seven months. That's awesome. Wow. Oh, and Noel. Noel. Did you see Noel? Well, no, because I'm see. still all over the place here with... We're still trying and to get this, used to the whole... That doesn't highlight. No, it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. highlight it the way that it should on our brand new system here. But what we can do... Are you favoriting them? Is that what you're doing? Oh, no. Okay. So, How do I do that, though? Oh, well, hold on. We can just do this. Boom. So we have that. Noel's been a member for 36 months. Wow. That's a lot of months. Thank you so much. So... Celebrating three years, just spent the afternoon moving two tanks from a guest room because I'm carrying four my soon-to-be daughter-in-law's bridal gown and paranoid about tanks exploding overnight. <laughs> or you could have like something mm. like whole like meet the parents sort of thing with the cat. Yes. You're jinxie. trying to avoid that. Non-jinxie only jinxie cat. Yeah, only with fish. I understand. So thank you for being here and taking a little bit of time off wow. uh, from your busy schedule. All right, next one. Now, those were fish, I think, are categorized on fish that can be surprisingly aggressive, and you really have to kind of watch out for them. This next, These next few is a different consideration. And the first one I will offer up is this bad boy. And this bad boy is known as the tinfoil barb. Yes. So tinfoil barb, beautiful fish. I absolutely love this fish. They can look every bit as beautiful as the picture is showing us right now. We had a few in our 150, and what was your main main concern, gripe? Oh my God! Comments. They're too big. They were too big for the tank. Yeah. I wanted to like ship them off to uh, to um, Ohio Fish Rescue or something. Well, we you know? had plans to not there, but we were going to move them out of the aquarium. And unfortunately, we had a a disaster happen where we did we did some water changes one day, and we lost. The tinfoil barbs, we lost some other fish. We lost some bristle nose. It was basically, yeah, and some of your bettas. So we lost some fish in a few parts of the fish room, and the rest of the tanks were fine, and it was the weirdest thing ever. But anyway, tinfoil barb. And here, the reason why you want to be careful with these guys, there's actually two reasons, really. Uh, Reason number one is 
they are absolutely huge fish. And you see these fish at the pet stores and the tank requirements that I think most that you see are, are not realistic because again, it's a barb fish, it's a schooling fish. Keep them in a group, not aggressive. I would say like the other ones, they can certainly be assertive and this especially when food happens they're like a bull in a china shop there's pop 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 pop. they're super 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 active eaters but they're huge and ours were maybe on the order of 12 to 13 inches when they passed and they could have gotten larger i've seen them larger if you're going to keep them in a large group the way they should be and again six or more i think is very appropriate oh man a 220 220 221 whatever it takes but yeah. No, I would say like, you, you know, you're starting to get in Atlanta, 220, 240 gallon, an eight foot tank would be a really awesome option. And I know, you know, you look at some of these recommendations like, oh, 55 gallon is fine. A 55 gallon, these fish full grown, they can't even turn around in that thing. So you just got to be super careful about the tinfoil barb. They're a very, very active fish that get very large. And oh, by the way, I think it, it's also a fish that can scare easily. Right. And so yes. the last thing you want is a group of tinfoil barbs that can scare a little bit and then they start smashing into the walls of your aquarium, smashing the aquarium, uh, the decorations, wood, rocks. They can injure themselves, although ours never really did that. What ours did do, and you would hear this from time to time as I'd be down in the fish room, and, and I, I, I'm telling you, they did this on purpose to me almost every night. I would drop the food sticks in there for them because I'd feed them the North Fin food sticks and they would splash the heck out of me every single time I fed them. It was like they waited and there's like splash. And I'm not just talking about, oh, I got a few drops of water. I'd come upstairs and be like, what? You were feeding the tinfoil bars, weren't you? Like half my shirt would be wet. They love doing that. I, I, I think I heard them laughing one time. I, I heard them laughing like, ha, 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 watch this. Watch this, Bob. Boom, not me, soaking wet. So tinfoil barbs, very large, be very careful with them. I would say the other fish that is definitely pretty much everything we said about the tinfoil barb would apply to this next one, and that is the ballast shark. Now, truth be told, the ballast shark, I actually had more in the 150, and I got I got most of the ballast sharks out as they started to grow, and I, I got rid of them. I got them to somebody who had a larger tank, but I could not catch, I couldn't catch the other ones. So they were left in the 150. But just like the tinfoil barbs, they get almost as long, not quite so wide bodied, all the activity of the tinfoil barbs. And you, again, you combine those things together and you've got a fish that can be, well, let's just say a little bit, um, a little bit hyperactive. So, and a little bit tough to keep. So just like the tinfoil barbs, I, if I were to keep them again, half a dozen in a larger tank, the other interesting thing is that I found is I've had tinfoil barbs a number of different ways. And when I kept them with cichlids, they tended to act a lot more, oh, it's almost like they learned how to be more aggressive. It, it sounds weird to say, and I don't know if some of you have ever thought that, and I'm not necessarily saying it's a, the best thought in the world necessarily, but I have seen these, the ballast sharks especially, it's almost like they had a learned behavior where they became a little bit more aggressive than they normally are in the cichlid tanks. And of course they would do the whole, you know, they get together and do the flashing thing. And mm -hmm. you know, that could be a, a show of dominance sort of thing, a very, very aggressive eater once again. So you just gotta be careful with those bad boys cause you just never know with them. Uh, Leslie, thank you so much for the super chat. I've Googled tank mates for bettas, watched countless videos and asked for advice multiple times. I can't have snails or shrimp because my water is too soft. Any other suggestions? It depends on the size of the tank. We did check out the betta buddies video that we did. So just type in betta buddies, primetime aquatics. And what we did in that video is we actually went more or less, I think we assumed for the most part that the better was going to be kept in at least a five gallon aquarium from what I can remember yeah. and basically gave stocking suggestions based on different aquarium sizes. So check out that video because it really does depend on your aquarium size. So um, yeah, the soft water would definitely eliminate a lot of your inverts, but you do have some options as long. I would say the options start with at least a 10 gallon. I, I personally... Other than the mystery snails, I don't like to put any fish in with bettas in a five gallon, but if you've got at least a 10, options, fish options start appearing from there. So check that out um, just because, yeah, there. And, and again, even with the options that we suggest, you really have to make sure, like we suggested some smaller types of tetras from what I can remember. And 
you got to make sure they're well fed because any tetra, as they start to get hungry, they'll look at big betta fins from the, the males Yummy. and be like, mm, I think I'm going to go ahead and start to chomp on those a little bit here and there. So as long as that's not happening and you're feeding your fish well, you do have some options. Some of the more uh, chilled out tetras, we've done endlers before. You didn't like that in the tank that we had because the endlers were a little bit too active. I've seen bettas be kept with guppies without too many issues. Glow light. Um, Tetris. The glow light tetras, we kept them with white clouds before. Uh, that worked out just fine. Again, they ignored the beta. The beta ignored them. So those are definitely some options. But check out that video because I think that would be super helpful. Okay, next one. Again, same category, just like the tinfoil barbs, just like the ballast sharks. And that is the silver dollar. And you don't like silver dollars, and you no. never have. Well, why is that? Because because they look like a they look like a paku. Yeah, but pakus look pretty cool. No, I don't uh, think so. They so scare the, me. The silver Ever dollars. Since I saw the movie when I was little. The movie. Yeah. A movie about a paku. Yes. There's no movie about a paku. Yeah, there is. Are you sure you're not talking about Jaws? No. Okay. No. Whatever. But anyway, this called. might surprise some of you. Because like, oh, man, the silver dollar. I thought that was a pretty good option. And it can be. We have a group of eight of them right now in a 125. But just like the silver dollars and just like the tinfoil barbs, I think where the disconnect comes in is depending on the source that you look at, I think a lot of people recommend a tank that is too small for silver dollars given two things. They do get large. I mean, easily, easily, easily the body can be the size of your hand. Easily. And ours are right now. All eight of them and they're not even full grown yet, size of my hand, just, just the body. Uh, not only that, of all the fish I've mentioned so far, I think they are by far the most skittish and they are the most prone to scaring. So you combine that with the fact that they do get pretty large. And oh, by the way, they will devour any plants you put in the aquarium. I mean, there has never been a green thing that they didn't love to eat, but they also will love to eat snails. I used to put handfuls of all kinds of ram's horn snails, pond snails, Malaysian trumpet snails. They would, they would eat them all. So with this fish, again, I would not keep them in a group that's large enough to make them feel comfortable in a tank that's less than six feet. Could you get away with a 75 or a 55? Yeah, probably. But again, that group of eight that I have, they're big. And if I move those eight fish to a 75 gallon and I showed you what they look like, you'd be like, ah, dude, they need to move to a larger tank because, and these are just standard silver dollars. There's lots of different types, but these are some of the smaller ones, uh, smaller varieties. And the other thing that I don't know a lot of people, a lot of, but if a lot of people appreciate this, and that is, this is a fish that would do best with subdued lighting. And I think that's probably the same with the ballast sharks and tinfoil bars, but especially these guys. I noticed when I turned those 125 lights way down, because we had a couple of Fluval 3.0s on there, and I turned the lights down to like 25% of max, and they were loving it. Really? They were very, very relaxed. Mm -hmm. When I turned the lights up, they started to freak out a little bit more because we had to get some algae stuff done and I turned them up and I left them that way. They didn't like that as much. Okay. Now. Everybody help me out here. Like okay. Aaron, the movie that I'm thinking of is called Piranha. Did you ever see it? Not Paku. Piranhas and same Paku. Thing. Oh my gosh. They're not even close to the same they're, thing. They're related. They're like related you, enough. I mean, if you on. look at a Paku and you look at... A piranha. They look very similar. I interchange the Okay, names. but could you imagine? First of all, Paku get way, 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 way huger. Way huger. Yes, they are closely related, okay. but could you imagine a, a, a group of piranha that were as big as Paku? Like, how scary that would be? That would, that would actually make a pretty good movie if they were that big. Well, they were in the movie. They were not as big as Paku because the Paku I think they were massive. in the movie. Here's a fun story for you. I once had a Paku because back in the 90s, they're like, oh, they just grow to the size of the tank. So I'm like, cool. I <laughs> throw this thing in this 75 gallon. It's small, right? And I had a group of silver dollars and they were all like a you know 50 cent piece size. And it would school with the silver dollars. And this thing within a few months was like, <laughs> it was growing bigger. And all of a sudden the silver dollars were like, man, uh, our brother is really growing <laughs> fast. But they would still all school together. But it started to look really stupid. And then I eventually... <laughs> gave that fish back mm. to the pet store. I'm like, uh, yeah, I think this is going to grow too big. Oh, I'll we'll take it back. All right. Now this last group, and then we're going to get to your questions here. This last group, 
is in this category. And this is not an exhaustive list. Again, I'm just picking some fish that I think we, again, we should just watch out for. This is going to surprise all kinds of people. Are you looking? Mm. No, I'm reading what James is talking about. Those and that is the guppy. Them. Keep them there. Now, we've talked about the guppy before. And the reason why I say you've got to be careful with this fish is genetics. And that's yeah. really where we're focused on these genetics and disease, uh, how prone they are to disease. So I have found that guppies can be problematic depending on where you buy them. If you buy them from a reputable breeder, if you're buying them from a pet store that's buying them locally, far fewer problems. And you might have really wonderful luck with these fish. When a lot of the pet stores are buying them from not local breeders, it can be a problem. And I, I've told this story a million times how I had problems for years. I'd go to the store, I'd buy guppies, they'd bring them home. Within a week, they're all gone. And it just kept happening to the point where I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. And then finally, I got some guppies from uh, two sources. One was Twin City Guppies, and the other one was a local, uh, the Chicago Live Bear Society. And I had fantastic luck with those. I'm like, oh, turns out I can keep guppies and breed guppies just fine. So with this one, just be careful because depending on where you get them, if you buy guppies, and you bring them all home, and you've got the right water parameters, right? So we've got harder water with a higher pH. If you buy guppies from a local fish store and like, okay, within a week they were all gone and they were, when you got them, they looked okay. Maybe you, you need a different source. It, sometimes it doesn't make any sense to go back to that same source, try it again, and then they all die. And then try it again, they all die. It might not be you. It might just be the strain. And I would say that's the same thing for these guys here sometimes. And it's really important with the Daniel to make sure you're buying them from a source that quarantines them for a proper amount of time. I took this picture from Flip Aquatics. Great source, right? They're a channel sponsor, absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why, because I know they're gonna quarantine their fish long enough where if there's gonna be a problem, they experience the problem, not the end user. That's the whole idea. That's why we quarantine our fish for so long. I'll give you a great example. We have some fish that came in this week. Uh, yeah, we've got a swap on the 7th. Guess what you're not going to be seeing on the website on the 7th? The boxes of fish that we got this week. Do you want to know how bad that sucks for us? Because I, this is expensive, right? We buy thousands of fish and these fish got held back and they came in a couple weeks late. I'm not turning that into your problem. That's my problem. And that's the same thing that Flip Aquatics does. It. That's not the customer's issue if I can't turn these fish. And by the way, I'm going to miss the GCCA swap and that is probably going to be one of the bigger swaps in January that we do all year long. And yet those fish are going nowhere because what good does it do me to turn fish around in a week and a half to two weeks? And then all of a sudden I hear from people, oh, you know what? Those six fish that you sold me, they, I only have two left. I, I, that breaks my heart when I hear that. I don't want to hear that. Even when we do things right way, every once in a while, you'll get somebody like, oh yeah, I lost three of those fish. No, that, that's not good. So the Daniel, back to the Daniel. This is a fish that is constantly sold as a beginner fish, and in some ways it is, but it's a very active fish. Again, a fish you want to keep in large groups. can be a little bit fin nippy, and even though it's a small fish, just because it's a small fish doesn't always mean it's the best fish in the world to have. And especially with the Daniel, sometimes with the genetics issues that can appear, this might be another one, just like guppies, where you're like, I don't know why I get these fish, and then... Everybody says they're great beginner fish and I lose half the Daniels I get. And you hear that from a lot of people, right? They're beautiful, but if you keep having problems with a fish, sometimes it's like, you know what, it's not me. I have the water parameters for them. I did all the right things and I couldn't keep them alive for longer than two weeks. Well, maybe it's the source. So be careful with those. This beautiful fish, I like it. Uh, <sighs> the neon, this is just a standard, it's not the green. I'm aware of that. The big thing here with the neon is neon tetra disease. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because we have brought in thousands of standard neons, uh, at least a thousand green neons, probably five to 600 cardinal tetras at this point. And we've had black neons for a very long time. The standard neon is the one that we have the most problems with. We, I mean, I think the last time we brought in the green neons, we had like 600, we lost like three. Uh, we brought in the cardinal tetras, and we got them from a source that, uh, from what we understood, they did well in water parameters such as ours with the higher pH and hard water. That turned out to be 100% true. They were awesome. The black neons are always like awesome fish, but the standard neon is one that 
is problematic sometimes. And you add in the neon tetra disease, which is is prone to, I just couldn't do it. There was there was one time I brought in the last time I brought in standard neons. I brought in 600, and I was left with 150 after about two weeks. And then out of that 150, I think we had like 100 where they finally, they made it through the process, the quarantine process, but I held them back for like a couple months and they were fine. But think about that for a second. You go from around 600 down to 100 to 150, that's just not going to happen. So um, you got to be just, again, of all the neons, I would say this is the one that I would be most careful about. And again, make sure you're buying them from a reputable source that's quarantining them. So there, again, if there's going to be a loss, like I just explained, then you're not the one that's going to experience that loss. And the last one that I want to talk about tonight is another one. We've talked about this a few times, and it's the com it's the betta, right? The betta is a great fish. It's one of the premier, it's the gateway fish, as I like to call it. And the vast majority of people you hear about getting into the aquarium hobby, it's like, oh, I bought a betta, and then, it, then everything snowballs, right, out of control. And I've got, I bought a five-gallon of a betta, now I've got 68 tanks, <laughs> which is awesome. Thank you, betta, for doing that. Uh, our betta video is one of the most uh, watched videos we've ever done, the betta species profile. Absolutely magnificent fish. Get them from a reputable breeder or get them from someone who is selling them, who's caring for them. Again, uh, John and Lisa, right? Uh, they do a great job, KG Tropicals, of making sure their bettas are happy and healthy and care for them uh, in a way where they maximize the likelihood that you're gonna get a betta that is healthy. But a lot of times you go to the store and it's not, I mean, how many of you have had a betta that only lasted six months or a year or like a year and a half? You're like, oh, wow, it lasted a year and a half. How great is that? And then usually what happens with these bettas that have poor genetics is you start to see abnormal growths, right? So you get these tumors and stuff like that on the betta or, you know, like I remember for a while the glow bettas, do they even sell those anymore? They do. And we had a glow beta. It went blind. And Mercasha from oh uh, Creative Pet Keeping had a blow a, blow, a glow beta, and that went blind. But even the standards, there's there's so much line breeding going on there that I think a lot of the genetics is getting very poor. And where you should have a fish that should easily last three, four, five years, so many of them now are like six months to a year, and then they're gone. And so you just again be really careful with that because. It's just one of those fish every once in a while that it, it doesn't do as well. Now, there's still tons that do, right? I mean, you yeah. had, you've had you had a number of bettas that lasted multiple years, as they should. But, oh, my goodness, the, the bettas these days, sometimes yeah. you, you wonder about them. So, yeah. So that is, again, it's just some fish that I think you just have to be, you have to be really careful, right? You got to be really careful with some of these fish because... They're not always, for any one reason or another, either the genetics, the size, and do your research. Right? That is why we do so many species profiles, because if you're doing your research, it's going to allow you to make the best possible informed decision uh, out there. So if you've got questions, now is the time. We will definitely go ahead and answer as many as we can. MNC says, so far... I've managed to keep my female betta seven months, usually five to six months. Well, hey, that's good. Um, it's going a little bit longer than before, so that's cool. And Marose says, started with a mystery snail and a betta. Now I'm at seven tanks, go to fish conventions, and work at the fish store. It, it's, it happens, and that's a good mm -hmm. thing, right? I mean, it's, the nice thing about fish keeping is it is a hobby where you can grow in the hobby, and it's inexhaustible in some ways. I mean, when you think about, I've been keeping fish now for 44 years and I'm still excited about it. I'm still excited. I still haven't kept all the fish. I have, certainly haven't bred anywhere close to, you know, all the fish, but, and there's always ways to change things, whether it's a different aquascape, whether it's a different tank setup, whether it's keeping different types of fish. It's very common for people to bounce back and forth between community tanks and cichlid tanks and community cichlids and biotopes, and they just keep cycling through and all, oh, I'm gonna do a goldfish tank because I haven't done that in five years and it's exciting. So fish keeping is a very, very cool hobby in that respect where it's, it's endless and it's awesome. Endless and awesome. <laughs> yeah. Chris says, prime time, love the questions on the screen, fancy. Hey, you know what? 
So if I would have had more time, the pictures were supposed to be video. So that's coming. That is coming Thanks very, very soon. I just didn't have the time to put mm -hmm. the clips in that I wanted. But that is definitely on its way. So that was one of the things with this new program that we have is to up our live stream game a little bit. And then I cannot wait until we move it down into the fish gallery. And so we have that background. And, it's two of us. Yeah. And all of the, the added benefits that's going to come with that. Woo. So definitely going to happen. Chris says, I'd love to see how see a show on how to do research. It's easy for most of us, but not all. Oh. That's a that's a great that's a great um, suggestion uh, it is. in terms of how to do research. The short, short version is you look at reputable sources online and you're multiple looking for sources. multiple sources, uh, multiple, hopefully reputable sources. And you see where the overlap is and where the agreement is. If you've got a lot of sources telling you the same thing through experience, right? Not just something somebody read on the internet from somebody else. And that's why a lot of people ask us, hey, when are you going to do a species profile on this fish or that fish? Or, well, my answer is one, they have to be a fish that we, we have kept numerous times and in numerous situations because, you know, even with the species profiles, you can keep a fish in one tank in one certain way and think you know how the fish behaves. And then you keep a fish in a different setup with other tank mates or with other aquascaping options. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, this fish behaved very differently. Or even if you keep them in different size groups, you know, I think like the silver tip Tetra is a really good example of that, where if you keep five or six, do they school? Yeah, they do. They do not as tightly as when you keep them in like 50, 60, 70, and they're doing that whole thing where it looks like finding Nemo and they're just doing that whole schooling thing. Holy cow. Does that look crazy cool? So, yes, it does. Yeah. Um, Allison says, I want a pair of tuxedo guppies on Flip Aquatics Black Friday. Oh, nice. That's sweet. Uh, two have now become 18. Love it. Woohoo. That's a, that's a good thing. That's cool. Second floor says, is the light count not working? It's been stuck on 24 for a long time with 286 watching. Mine I says know. 112. I guess you're going to have to uh, nope. tell now second floor. Nope, it says 114. Floor, tell uh, second floor, no, the, the thing's working. You know, convince her, I suppose. So I think it's I think it's okay. Maybe just a Adrian lab. says, a pair of my neons look like they've got larger lips than the other younger ones. Is this normal or is this likely to be neon tetra disease? Uh, not necessarily normal. No, I mean, if they're if they're swollen or something, uh, sometimes that can be a fungal thing, a bacterial thing. So that that is not usually something that happens a lot. So I would lean towards some type of possibly some type of infection, potentially. BC Dolphin is in the house. What's up? Thank you so much for the super chat. Glad you're hanging out with us. Uh, your thoughts on chain loaches in a standard 20 gallon, uh, six Cooley loaches and 12 green Kubatai Rasbora. If so, how many would you recommend? That's a great question. So the dwarf chain loach is a very tiny fish. Uh, gets to be about an inch or so. And you've got six Cooley loaches in there. So that would be my concern. Dwarf chain loaches, believe it or not, can be a little bit rambunctious and be a little bit bothersome to other fish, especially other bottom dwelling fish and especially other loaches. If it were me, I wouldn't mess with them in the tank. We've already got the six coolies, especially if your six coolie loaches are out and about and they're a fish that you normally see. Here's what I could imagine happening. I'm not saying this will happen and I could be off on this, but having kept the dwarf chain loach before, my thought is you put in so for instance, if I, if I didn't have the Cooley loaches in there in a 20 gallon, could you do four to six? Yeah, I think you probably could. But my intuition, my fish keeping intuition is telling me that when, if and when you do that, I don't think you see your Cooley loaches anymore. Not because they, you know, they kill them or anything like that, but because they pester them to the point where the Cooleys don't want to come out anymore. And I think they start not coming out for food and stuff like that. So again, I could be off. I could be wrong. I just... I personally wouldn't try to mix those two loaches together. So that's just my thoughts. Dan says, my daughter got two guppies and 10 fire cherry shrimp. Cool. We got two 20 gallon tanks and to separate the males and females. I hate to do this, but what fish should I get to stop the insanity? 200 guppies, 100 plus shrimp. It, <laughs> it happens, man. <laughs> Trust me, you're not the first person that's ever asked this question and you will not be the last. That is nothing... That is not an unusual question to ask. Uh, so we've got a lot of both. So here's what I would say. If you have a local fish store, 
my guess is you're not going to get a lot of money from them. You'll, it's one of those things where you'll be like, oh, can I trade you some cherry shrimp for some fish food? Um, that is definitely an option. So with the shrimp, before you start removing shrimp in a natural way, see if there's an option for that. The 200 guppies, unless it's a really rare strain or an exceptionally beautiful strain or a Dumbo ear type, that can be more problematic because sometimes fish stores don't want the guppies until they're grown up and large enough to actually sell. So if in the 40 gallon, um, what I would do, if they're still smaller, if you still got a lot of babies in there, then possibly what I might look at is a dwarf garami. And I've recommended that a number of times and a lot of people have come back and said, yeah, that really did the trick. I don't see any more guppy fry in there anymore. So the dwarf garami for both the shrimp and the guppies one dwarf grammy in the tank should start putting a dent in that. The other thing that you can do, especially for the shrimp, is some of the smaller cichlids like the Bolivian rams uh, and the crebensis. And they might also possibly control your guppy populations and leave the, leave the adults alone. So uh, if you've got small ones in there, that, that would usually be something that you could potentially do for the smaller ones. Um, John wants to know any tips or tricks for getting a male bushy nose pleco out of uh, a cave built like a watering stake. Uh, why would you want to do that? I guess is the question. So the males will stay in there for a prolonged period of time, usually for a couple of reasons. One, they are protecting eggs, in which case they're fanning the eggs. And that is by far the best way to get them to hatch rather than try to do that you know, through an egg tumbler or something like that, or they've got a female trapped in there, in which case they're about to breed. If you shine a little flashlight in there and you're sure there are no eggs and you're sure there are no little tiny baby fry, because the male will keep the fry pushed in there until they're ready to be released. So that's usually why they spend an extended period of time in there. If you're looking to get it out for just the sake of removing it, they can be extreme it's tough because once they put out those pectoral fins and that dorsal fin and those spines, they're locked into place pretty solidly. So, I mean, and you got to be careful too by sticking your hands in there because they're also, that, that those can be pretty sharp. Um, and they can be in there for a couple of weeks at a time. So I'm not so sure I would try to remove it unless there's an absolute reason why. I mean, even if it was in there and you wanted to put another tank, I would just take that whole cave out and just chuck it in another tank. Uh, other than that, let it come out on its own. It will eventually come out, but I, I wouldn't try to remove it just because that can be a, a little bit of an issue. Jordan, thank you so much for the super chat. I didn't see a question. So if you got a question, you know, just feel free to type it in uh, a little bit later down there in the thing. What about Oink's question? Oink's got a question. Oink. 27 months. Thank you so much. I got a baby discus at auction. Have you found them to be okay, oh my singular as a centerpiece or happier in groups? Uh, P.S. I am relieved your mirror arrived intact. Yes, it did. It did. Thank you so right, much perfectly. Uh, for that again. Really it appreciate it. Gallery. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so baby discus, can you keep it singular? Yeah, I, I've done it before. I didn't notice like, you know, they were sitting around all the press, leaning up against a tree being like, oh man, you know, I don't have any buddies. But, I'm also not a discus expert, so uh, I've kept them singly and you can keep them in groups and I don't really notice a huge difference. Maybe other people have and you can feel free to pipe in and be like, oh yeah, man, they do way better in a group. But when I've kept them on their own, I didn't, like I said, I didn't notice some major difference like they were acting differently or anything like that. James says, what is the true life expectancy of a beta? I've only ever gotten two or three years. Uh, and a half the time I'm either medicating or trying to save them from bloat at one time or another. Yeah, I know. And that's that's some of the, the issues that are going on there. I think as more and more of these, these bettas get line bred for different features, whether it's fins or color, you start to see more of those issues. I can tell you that back in the old days, you know, this is going back 15 years, it wouldn't be unusual to keep a betta around for five or six years. But that life expectancy, it just seems like more and more it's gotten shorter and shorter, unfortunately. So two to three years nowadays it's isn't half good. bad. Yeah. It really isn't, unfortunately, yeah. especially if they're just store-bought bettas. And yeah, I know, I get it. The bloat and all that stuff can be a real pain as well. Mac 22 lost seven of 10 Rummy Nose Tetras last week. They were n not ill, but see 
My Congo Tetris chasing them. Is it likely they killed them? Never seen them aggressive though. Uh, yeah, Congo Tetris can sometimes be a little bit assertive um, in terms of killing them. Hmm. I mean, I guess if they really stress them out, but usually a little bit of chasing doesn't get to a point where you're going to lose 7 out of 10. I don't know if anything new was added to the aquarium, any special, you know, even if it's fish or wood or plants, uh, anything at all, or maybe there was equipment that was that was being used in a quarantine tank or a tank that had new fish and was also being used in that tank. Uh, sometimes when, you know, 7 out of 10, that's a big group, though, to be lost in one week. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the Congos did stress them out, chase them. I don't know if you noticed anything in terms of, like, fin nipping or anything like that or, like, spots on the body that might indicate bite marks, maybe. All right, I mean, Whip, what movie are you watching? Whip's watching a movie? I think he's still, he said this is the longest movie ever, so I think he's still watching a movie, but I want to know what movie he's watching. Anyways, um, Allison says, uh, I have trouble with Anubius Gigantia. The rhizome keeps rotting and the leaves turn brown. Have I seen this? All other types of Anubius are doing great. Um, no, I haven't. I have had Gigantia. I, I do currently have it. I haven't noticed by particular um, type that they're, they're dying off. All I can guess is that you're just getting duds. You know, whoever's hmm. the, probably from the grower. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you. But yeah, mine have done equally as well. I've, the only ones that I've gotten have been from Pet Co. And they worked out okay. Yeah, so far so good. James, thank you so much for the little super sticker, little dancing guy. Really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you. It's awesome. <laughs> thank you, James. All right, let me see here. Bob Davis. I had Cardinals with Congos. No issues at the time, but I did move the Congos to a 75 after some time. Yeah, right now I've got Congos in a 40 breeder in a decent-sized group. Believe it or not, they're a little bit hard on one another, especially the dominant male. But I've got them in with the Volcano Bitterlings, which is also a really rambunctious fish, and some dwarf mouth brooders, and some Microtinopoma, some Bristlenose Plecos, and some Harlequin Rasboras. And that group, for the most part, they're all getting along, for the most part, just fine. So... Um, yeah, they're doing okay. Frank says, have you noticed your female rummy nose rasboras are very shy? My males are commonly out in the front uh, sparring, but I've never seen the females. It could just be one of the things too, where they're like, you know what? I really don't want to be around the males right now because I don't want to do the things the males are doing. So that could be part of it. But I haven't noticed a big difference in terms of the, the uh, both the males and the females are usually out. Jordan, thank you so much for the super chat. Is it normal for African cichlids to hang out around the bottom? Today I noticed that my cichlids have been around the bottom a lot more than usual. Yeah, I mean, Africa, to me, African cichlids, it, I mean, like the Mbuna, the, the peacocks, they can spend some time at the bottom. Uh, the other thing is if the males are doing a lot of display, they could be trying, or digging, they could be trying to entice females for breeding. If you've got a mixed uh, group in there of males and females, so uh, that can certainly happen as long as they're not breathing heavy, as long as their fins aren't like all clamped up, and you know sometimes that can happen too, where water parameter something is off in the aquarium, and then they're down at the bottom and they're kind of like, oh, I'm you know I'm hurting. But as long as you have not noticed any other unusual activity other than just their location, but their fins are still being held properly and they're still active, happy, healthy, and eating, then. I, it's not something I typically worry too much about. B says, I recently got a TDS meter for the first time in my tank, and my tank came in at 961. <laughs> wow. After a water change, it's now 405. The tap is 257 by itself. Am I okay with just more frequent water changes? Yeah. So obviously that 961, a lot of that was probably nitrate, a lot of it, uh, most likely. So definitely more water changes. The 405 is a lot more close to manageable, but I mean, if your fish were doing okay at 961, then that's good. But yeah, more frequent water changes or larger water changes to try to keep that down, especially if your tap is coming out, you said at 257. So you could probably maintain that between, uh, I don't know, 300 to 350. That would, that would be pretty awesome if that was possible. Christmas says, I have three Anubias all in different tanks and they're all flowering. Is this oh, the time of cool. year they do that? Um, you know, I wouldn't doubt it because you've got our one flowering too, right? Two, 
two of them flowering. Two, really? Yeah, so. Maybe it is. It very well could. They could be like early to hellebores. I don't really know. It's a Nubius flowering season. <gasps> oh, I would, you know what? It would just, that would be very appropriate because Nubius is the best plant. And winter is the time for snow, which is beautiful. And they should flower when it there should be snow outside. But okay. there isn't. Well, that's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. Uh, F-Tech, hi, everyone. Happy holidays. So, had to share my Cory 10-gallon leaks, so they got the upgrade to a 55-gallon. I was planning for Christmas, even if I'm still so stuck on my Aquascape. Well, you know what? You, you had to do what you had to do. I get it. You know, you had a Cory 10-gallon, and you're like, wow, you know what? That 10-gallon leaked, and we want to give our fish the best. And so the natural, I think that was a very natural thing to do is go straight from a 10 gallon to a 55 gallon. I mean, seems logical Sounds to all of us. You know, there's almost 300 people here chilling out. And I would bet most of us would be like, hey, give them a thumbs up if you think that that's... This. 300 you, thumbs up. Yeah, <laughs> give them a thumbs up if you all think that going from a 10 gallon to a 55 gallon and taking the opportunity uh, is a totally normal and obvious thing to do. Congratulations. I like that. That was definitely... <laughs> a cool thing <laughs> too nice. funny i love it oh uh leslie says uh, i just realized that uh, i didn't leave yay that's right for like three weeks i don't leave early oh You're yeah stuck yeah stuck with me oh that's true here, the whole time Whew. i don't know can we handle no this talking behind my back or whatever you're yeah, blabbing we are on talking in front of your back <laughs> yeah we were talking smack about all of your stuff <laughs> yeah now we got to do it right here Sure, knock uh, yourself out. Paul says, what epistogram has a light blue teal body with yellow fins? I saw it as a thumbnail image on YouTube and cannot find the fish. So light blue body and uh, teal body with yellow fins. That sounds like the Borelii. Uh, let's see here. Light blue body would also be the Pandura, but they don't have usually yellow fins. Usually they have more red. Check out the Borelii. That might be the closest and i'm not a, a pistol expert i've kept a lot of the common ones plus the mendezi and the borelii and the pandero but that's the first one that came to mind if somebody else has another another uh guess by all means feel free to chime on in dirt bike says i have a small chinese algae eater oh you know what that is a big miss on our part that should have been one in our list today way to go the chinese algae eater uh, and some cory catfish i came mm. Uh, and there was a scale missing from the quarry. Do you think the Chinese algae eater? I think there's a high prob uh, really? probability the chi Chinese algae eater. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But yeah. Even, but even a quarry? Uh, Chinese algae eaters, especially with other fish that kind of hang out in their territory. That was really? a big miss on our part. That should have definitely been one in mm -hmm. our our opening little group of stuff to talk about. Yeah. Chinese algae eaters. And I'm so glad you brought that up. So yeah, I think it's probably it. Uh, Chinese algae eaters are... When they're small, they're, they're actually really cute because they've got that brownish body and they've got the little checkerboard like sort of uh, mid-stripe to them. They do a great job. I really love the Chinese algae eater in the, in, the proper, in the proper aquarium. It's one of the few algae eaters that gets large, can be with semi-aggressive fish. So for us, when I would keep the Chinese algae eater, it was almost always with cichlids and they would actually not only eat the algae and stuff from the tops of like fake plants, they would go under the leaves. They just did a very thorough job. And I know a lot of people say that they stop eating algae when they get larger. I disagree. I think if there's a lot of food competition in the aquarium, they will default to continue, continually eating like the biofilms and the algae from the aquarium. That's what ours always did because we had larger cichlids that would eat up the food. Um, and if you were worried about the Chinese algae eaters not getting enough food, you could feed them at night like a lot of the other, you know, like the loaches and stuff like that and not have the problem. The issue is, and the reason why I think it was a big miss on our part by not putting them in there, is they are a relatively aggressive fish that, by the way, can get to almost a foot long. So uh, these are, and especially they can be very combative with one another. So when I do that, when I keep them at least a four-foot tank and with fish that are somewhat aggressive otherwise they could be a problem so you might want to remove that fish if you've got quarry cats yeah oink says okay everyone that time i can see those fabulous green hearts for joanna's green neons and oh. blue heart motorcycles for my harley well her yours too I, all right i like that i will stick with my green hearts for green yeah. neons thanks wink <laughs> love it love it love it love it good um, question hold on 
Uh, Adrian says, what's the best way to harvest the corridor eggs off my tank glass? Didn't even realize I had breeding pair out of four. That's cool. And man, when they get going, I had albino quarries. They put eggs everywhere, man. It was on all four, like all four sides of the aquarium. It was all over the sponge filter uh, uplift tube and over plants. I was like, oh my gosh. It's not the gentlest way to do it, but I would take uh, like a turkey baster and some type of like a butter knife and just gently scrape them off the side and suck them up with a turkey baster and then basically squeeze them into an egg tumbler uh, in that same tank and I would tumble the eggs and it worked out just fine. And then when they hatch and they've got the little tiny uh, yolk sac, I would put them in, I had a, and I did a review on this. It was a hang on, ba hang on front really um, fry box and it was a breeder box. And I would put them in there and it ran the tank water through the breeder box. My only issue was, like the dodo I can be sometimes, I forgot dodo. to put the screen in for the return on the breeder box and all those little tiny albino that. quarries went right back into the main tank where that. they were consumed by the other fish. But in theory, that's the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to take those eggs, butter knife, gently scrape you're going to lose some all right you're going to damage some of them but you're going to still get a bunch and turkey baster squeeze them into an egg tumbler get them tumbling with an you know usually it's an air driven egg tumbler in that same tank water you start to see the little you know babies hatch out in the hang on front breeder box they go it's a great way to hatch out a ton of little baby quarries second floor how do you like the clown knife fish and black sharks? Do you think local fish stores should warn people how big they get? How about clown loaches as well? Love that question. Absolutely, the clown knife is not a fish for 99.9% .9 of people in the fish keeping hobby. Those fish can get four feet. I've seen them that large. Where were we when? Oh, it was the Cleveland Aquarium. By the way, for you know, a lot of these public aquariums, they do a great job showcasing like saltwater tanks. But what I loved about the Cleveland Aquarium, and if you ever get a chance to go there, I can't recommend, I've, I've done uh, tours of that place. They have a massive freshwater part. In fact, I would say most of that aquarium is freshwater. And they had some full size uh, knife fish in there that were at least three and a half feet. I mean, they were absolutely massive. Yeah. Most people cannot handle a, a fish that large. Same with the black sharks. You know, I mean, there was a bunch of fish we could have included in there, but I didn't, again, they're not as common. Uh, you mentioned the clown loaches. Yep, clown loaches. We've got them in the 125 right now, and they're eight or nine inches, and, and they get huge, right? They can get to a foot long and also get very wide-bodied. Uh, red tail sharks, I don't know why they even sell those things in a pet store because, again, 99.9% .9 of people don't have a tank big enough. We were in Dallas. The Dallas Aquarium there that was yeah. right by the Aqua Shell. It was, yeah. it was a relatively small aquarium. I liked it. Um, I, I thought it was okay. But the, what the cool thing was is they had these massive red tail cats in with manatees. And these red tail cats, and there was hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions of gallons in, in this aquarium. And these red tail cats were four feet long and probably weighed a hundred and something pounds. And I'm like, who's got an aquarium that large, right? Most people don't, unless you've got a pond or something like that. Uh, just not a good option. Paku, you know, I mentioned that before. Pakus can get, you know, huge, 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 huge fish. Yuck. So there's a lot yeah. of fish where I'm not necessarily want somebody who loves to say, oh, they shouldn't sell these fish in the aquarium hobby at all. But there are some fish where it's like, uh, how do you justify it? There was a an aquarium at the last Aqua Shella we went to, and they were selling sturgeon. Oh. Cool. I mean, they were they were mm. maybe a little over a foot at the time. Newsflash: unless you've got a river running through your backyard, you're not keeping an aquarium large enough for sturgeon. Unless it's a you know a, you know like an Ohio fish rescue large in ground pool. I mean, these things get ten feet long. A lot of them do. Even the smaller ones are six, seven, eight, nine feet, and live by the way for what a hundred years. Why? What what are we doing with that in the aquarium hobby? Fish fan, 20 gallon long. What's the movie? No matter what's going on in my life, I can always watch them swim and be totally at peace. I don't know. Uh, ooh, that's a good question. Because I feel really? like <laughs> Finding Nemo. That's two good guesses. You know, two good guesses right there. Leslie says, I love clown loaches. They get thick. 
but it takes years. It, it does. Clown loaches, generally speaking, grow relatively slow. So it's one of those fish when you see them at the pet store, and we often sell them at, I don't know, around two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where you put them in a four-foot tank. You've got some time. You do have some time before they need to move into another tank. That's for sure. All right, let me see here. What? what Zen what, what? is here. Zen Ginger. Zen? Hey. What's up? And uh, Sharpie Aquatics, too. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Very and, cool. Uh, happy, happy New Year. And Lynn, thank you so much for being a member of the last 39 Lynn. months. I hope everyone has a wonderful and fishful 2024. Uh, fishful. That oh. reminds me. Holy cow, you almost made me forget. By the way, there... Sorry, I'm going to be out of town next week, so there won't be a live That's stream. Right. Yeah, there won't be a live stream next Ooh. week. So we're going to take, I guess, basically the year, week one of the year. Uh, there won't be a live stream. We'll be back in two weeks. And I'm glad, I don't know, something just triggered that in my brain to remember that. But yeah, no live stream next week. But Party we'll pooper. be back two weeks. If I knew how to work all this, tonight. you know, and I just have it without you. I offered to show you real fast. It's really not oh, that. Can you that imagine? Difficult. I would mess something up. You probably would. It would be like horribly. some huge embarrassing thing. It'd be, you'd become a, an internet meme. I'd probably be like <laughs> setting everything up in the morning, yeah. accidentally turn it on, and then set it up for the live stream and turn it off. You know, so it yeah, would just be like there'd be or some kind of weird thing you would do, I'd do and something weird. I just know it. I know you would wind up being an internet meme, and it would be awesome. I think it's almost worth it for that, don't you think? I would be an internet meme. Okay. <laughs> Somehow, some way, we could make it work. Hmm. I think so. Okay. <laughs> Lawrence says my albino thread fin heckli has white spots, not ick, bigger than ick, but seems to have some kind of nasal infection that may be related. Aww. Uh, maybe something with lymph. Well, if you're 100% sure it's not ick, then uh, yeah, maybe you could do some antibiotics, right? Some labamisol, erythromycin uh, might be an option. I'm trying to think what were my, it's been so long now since I've had any issues. Oh, Marison, Marison too. So uh, the Marison 1 and Marison 2 combination is when I think that there's anything external going on and I know it's not ick, those are two. Uh, the other one is Oxy. Uh, the Oxy Marison is also a really, really good one too. So that's a liquid. It comes in powder as well. But those are my, well, no, I guess three go-tos, but the Marison 1s and 2s are my two biggest, most important one yet. Uh, Adrian says, will you guys have CPDs available at the upcoming GCCA swap? We will, and they are big. So I've got a couple hundred of them, and they are nearly full grown and already Yay. showing outstanding colors. I was really excited about them. them. I haven't yeah. seen them lately. You haven't seen them? No. Oh, yeah, so they will be at the GCCA swap. Um, like Sweet. I said, big, and I was very, very happy with the way they look because usually they don't come in that, that big and juicy. The movie, by the way... Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. I haven't oh, seen that movie yeah, in it's been a long time. eons. Yep, it's been a long time. Whip says a good Fine. thing about the sturgeon is they're native to North America, so can live in ponds even in Chicago. Yeah, but, well, yes, but the thing is, they also like water flow. So sometimes the pond, unless it's got like an extensive oh, amount of like water. Like a waterfall. Yeah, then it might not work. But the pond will still have to be huge. I mean, you're talking about, like I said, like a 10-foot fish, full grown. So I've, some of those things have been as, as big as 12 feet. So plus then what do you do with it, right? The thing is, what do you do with this fish? Because some those fish can outlive the people, right? Uh, it's kind of like having some of those birds where it's like, oh, this bird can live 80 to 100 years or a tortoise. Like, what do we do with a tortoise that's going to live to 120? And like, I just bought this thing and I'm you know 40 years old or something like that. Well, you're a sturgeon. Uh, if you got it a foot long and you were you know, an adult is probably going to outlive you. So it's like, I'm going to will my sturgeon to the person who has uh, also has a pond or river in their backyard. So it can be a little bit of a situation. The situation. Yeah. Legion says, hope you guys had an awesome Christmas. We did. Thank you very much. Did you guys get each other any cool gifts? I got a ninja blender <laughs> and some slippers. A ninja blend. That sounds fun. It I does actually sound fun. Those. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody get any cool stuff you want to share with the with the with the, the group class? here? Um, cool stuff. What do we get? I mean, I don't know. It's mostly little things, right? As you mm -hmm. as you get a little older, it's like okay, you just kind of want to do more little thoughtful gifts, I suppose. Where yeah. it's you know. Well, I gave you your two like two of your gifts beforehand. Yeah, they were both your Christmas, Christmas sweater. sweater and the Christmas shirt. 
and his yeah. his epic, yeah. you know, um, Christmas vacation. All things shirt. Harley. It's Harley. I, I, we've become really easy to shop for too. Yeah. yeah. And I got um, Harley shirt. I uh, Harley a um, hoodie. Yep. A um, couple t-shirts. Yeah. And... Yep. And yep. oh, I got you a what's the thing? It's like a steamer. Because he's like Mr. Freak Out if he sees wrinkles. Yeah. Oh I... gosh, it's like the end of the world. And I'm just like, yeah, just I like spritz water on him. And I'm like, just walk around a little bit. You'll be fine. But so I got an actual steamer that you just put around there and you just, it's battery operated. So I'm a weird dude. Um, they probably like, know that. Well, you know, you, <laughs> we all know goes that. without saying, but <laughs> I hang up all my t-shirts. I, I, I hang up the t-shirts I'm going to wear as an outside t-shirt. So if I have any t-shirts in the drawers, and I do, I have a lot, they're always t-shirts I wear under other things or just around the house. But if I'm going out, like this shirt that I wore is a shirt that was hung up in yes. the closet. So my, my shirts that, my going out t-shirts, I have to hang them up. And why, how, how pray tell are you able to hang all of your t-shirts? Well, because you wanted to trade closets with me. And why did I do that? Because I ran out of space? Yes, he has the larger closets. I have the smaller closets. I have a very, well, it's not a very large closet, but it's the largest one of the house. And it worked out Still well because small. I um, have, I, I definitely would prefer to have an even larger closet. So someday when both of our children are grown and out of the house, we can take over their closet. You and, can, because I'm just going to move in with them. Okay, then I can do a whole walk-in closet at that yes. point. Yes. Nice. Yeah. I'll feature it on some kind of a thing, you know. I'll just, man, he featured his walk-in closet, which is really just a room. That's right. That's right. I did. <gasps> James said he took he took his um, fancy to the Biltmore Estate. Nice. It's one of her gifts. Oh, that's cool. MG, James. That's really cool. Bob says, I got my oh, first 20-gallon tank. Sweet. What? That's awesome. So what? what is it? Uh, have you... Were you moving up in the world from another size, like a smaller size? Uh, yeah, 20 gallons is great. I remember each and every time I moved up to an aquarium, how big it seemed compared to the one I yeah. had. So uh, from the fishbowl to the 10 gallon, from the 10 gallon to the 20. And then, you know, as a kid, we went from a 20 to a 30. And then it was like 55 gallon. That first time you get a four foot tank, you're like, holy cow, this is so big, right? It's such a big viewing pane. Uh, yeah, very cool. Okay. Um, Meg Rue says, I, I just clicked on, um, because of the Raphael catfish on the thumbnail. Uh -huh. Can anyone let me know if I missed something about them? You didn't miss anything major in the, be in the beginning. I talked a little bit about, uh, the Raphael cat. We've had one now for 15 years, a super long lived fish, uh, which is totally awesome. They get pretty big. So at least eight, nine inches, maybe a little, and big wide fish to Little small girthy. mouths. So I don't tend to eat a ton of other fish, but they definitely like to pick out on food to the point where you got to be careful how much food they get because they can eat so much that sometimes they can make themselves uh, bloated. Uh, also armored, right? So there's a lot of armor on that fish. If you really look at it closely, got to be really careful when you're netting that fish or catching it because they've got very, very, very sharp spines on their pectoral and dorsal fin. So you got to be careful there, but it's a great fish. Uh, Blake, by the way, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. I uh, recently added a school of 12 black neons to fill the empty space in my 55 gallon that was left after I lost all but four cardinals and two congos. I must say they are my new favorite tetras. They are awesome. I agree with you that they are, in fact, awesome fish because they are one of my all-time favorite tetras, certainly out of the neon types. They are pretty much right up there as my number one neon type tetra favorite. They are cool and they're super hardy. That's the other thing too. And a lot of people overlook them because they see that black color, but what they don't fully appreciate if you've never had them is that blue stripe. And that blue neon stripe that they get with that little bit of yellow in the middle part of their, or gold in the middle part of their body, it really stands out. It's a very, very cool thing. Whip totally made it out, man. He yeah. off the top of his head. I got me a leather cowboy hat. I got some Harley square toe boots, tactical oh. boots. A Higer four foot light and two Aqua Clear one tens. Dang, Santa, that stop is by you. A good time right there. Sheesh. Definitely, that's awesome. Christina Robert says Happy New Year, everyone. What's up? Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year, Christina, Happy and everybody else. Happy New Year. 
Margaret says, besides snails, what can I add to my five gallon tank to eat algae that won't eat my shrimp? Oy, five gallon? I don't think there's much there that I would add that are shrimp safe that would also eat algae. I think you're 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 gonna have you're pro I, to be safe. I would pick either a mystery snail or maybe two or three nearite snails. I think would be the way to go. And hopefully, your better doesn't find them tasty. There's no better there. At least that I see. There was no mention of a better young lady. No. No. Oh, did I? I just automatically put the better in my head. You put the I was beta, picturing like a five-gallon, and then I just like head. mentally put the beta in the tank as well. Bruce, by the way, thank you so much for becoming a prime timer, prime eight, prime time partner. Really appreciate it. Glad you are hanging out with us. Hope you enjoy it. Two Face says, "Would you keep adult amano shrimp with turquoise rainbow fish?" I know I asked you this before. I would not. I I would not trust rainbow fish. Rainbow fish get big, so you're looking at. In a properly sized tank, a four and a half inch to five inch fish that's very active, very curious. And while their mouths are pretty small, I don't really trust them around invert. I don't trust them around shrimp. I, I probably wouldn't have a problem with snails, but yeah, man, I don't. Whew. I don't know if I would trust them around the shrimp. Good night, Mac. Everybody say good night, Mac. Good night, Mac. <laughs> um, James says uh, to a mono shrimp. To a mono shrimp in the five gallon. Yeah. Okay. I thought there were shrimp already in there. From what I can remember. Yeah, but I don't think they were a mono. Maybe not. So for algae, a mono shrimp. Yeah. Anyway, Lisa, thank you so much for being a member of the last nine months. Nobody got time to iron t-shirts. <laughs> I hang them up too. Forget I agree, it. and I'm one of those people where the boys will do this. They will need to wash something, and in in some ways, I appreciate it. They to fill out a load, they'll take other clothes, not their own, from the laundry basket and chuck it all in the wash and they'll wash it and they'll dry it and then they take this big pile and inevitably, how many of you, let's just have a, a moment of reality and honesty here, how many of you have the laundry chair or the laundry section of the couch? Where that, that laundry that goes us? to die. So maybe it is just I, us. Maybe I we're just, is. no, I think you it's know, just us. lazy or something like that. But they do this and they curl this stuff up into a big ball. They take the clothes that they need and they leave all the rest of the clothes instead of folding them. They just leave them there in the ball. Yeah. And so if we come home from work or something like that and the ball has been there for half a day, now everything is wrinkled. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there's that. That's my favorite. And then I got to be like, okay, well now this stuff all has to get unwrinkled because I'm not going to put it away that way. Bob says, do you think a five gallon would be big enough to quarantine a few quarry cats? Definitely. Most quarry cats, when you're buying from the store, are like an inch, maybe inch and a half. Not a problem. Chris says, love the red, red flint sand. Could it be used with an under gravel filter? Probably not because a lot of the grain sizes are too small. They're going to end up sinking through your under gravel filter and then cl basically clogging it up, for lack of a better term, rendering it useless. But they instead of the red flint sand they do sell a red flint gravel yeah so if you like that color mm -hmm. uh, you could do the gravel instead of the sand and then your under gravel filter will be just fine word blake says nearites are the best freshwater snail in my opinion nearites are cool they are not as big as mystery snails they some people would say that they do a better job of algae eating but uh, there's a couple downsides compared to the mystery snail, in my opinion. One, I don't think they're as active as the mystery snail. And two, those little white eggs they leave everywhere. Oh, I can't handle it. I can't handle it, man. Maybe I'm just a weakling when it comes to that. But that's my only, my only problem is that. All right, let me see here. I just saw something and I lost it. Oink says, um, so either it's the dryer or the couch that has eaten the one sock that has disappeared. Yes, our couch lately yeah. has been eating a lot of single Check socks. Check under the couch. That's oh, the in between the, the cushions. Or, or in between the like cushions. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Harrison said, can I keep a school of six to eight tetras with two to three guppies and a 20 gallon? If so, would there be any other recommendations of fish to add? Uh, yeah, as long as you pick the mm -hmm. right tetras. So none of the medium-sized, more fin-nippy type tetras like the Buenos Aires we talked about earlier. I would say 
Uh, things like the Red Eye Tetra is probably not the best idea. But if you've got smaller Tetras like the Embers, uh, the Green Neon types, uh, they stay pretty small. What else would be a smaller type Tetra? The Glow Light Tetra would be another good one. Um, What's this thing? 20 gallon. Green Neon. So I already I just said that. But I could say it again. You could say it again, yeah. So those are fine. Uh, any other fish, something at the bottom, coolie loaches, a, a small group of quarry cats might be nice. I might throw a bristle nose in a 20 gallon, especially if I can find a female to do kind of the scavenging algae control. Obviously, you got to feed that fish if there's no algae in there, but uh, that could also be an option. Uh, really like rice fish. That's a unique mm -hmm. sort of thing that are becoming more popular. So definitely something to consider as well. Right. Uh, peacock gudgeons are pretty cool yes they are they're they're really yeah. kind of cute um alan works wants to know your thoughts on black diamond blasting sand and i do want to throw this out also you can answer too but james nature aquatics does really high-end aquascaping and i remember jen williams had once said oh don't get me started on black diamond blasting sand and i never got to find out exactly why but james do you have any thoughts on it go ahead so so we, you keep wanting to set up a tank with black diamond blasting sand. The only experience I have is the experience from other fish keepers in our aquarium clubs. We haven't done it. Uh, most of the people in the club said they loved it, but I've heard a couple things. One was that maybe there were some issues with plants. Possibly. And sometimes some of it was on the sharper side, and so they were worried about softer underbody uh, for loaches, and even quarry cats in some cases getting a little scraped up. But then I have a lot of people who said, no, it was good, I used it with those things, and there was no issues. So mixed reviews, but again, not from personal experience. So unfortunately, we can't offer a whole lot of information there. <laughs> Whip said that I would need a house inside my house to house all my t-shirts if I tried to hang them all. Yeah, I know, right? We're getting to that point, too. It, we are. It's it's getting a little bit... Uh, so crazy with t-shirts. Yeah. I love t-shirts. Oh it's gotten to the point where I, we used to go to like all the Harley places, and then we get the Harley t-shirts from the different locations. Now, unless yeah. that location has an absolutely awesome picture on it, like the that's specific to that location, you gotta say I no. just get the little coin, and I'm like, nope, can't I'm do it. Because pretty soon, at some point, I'm going to have to start getting rid of some of them less desirable ones that I have. Um, second floor brought up Lemon Tetra. Did you see that? I always forget yeah, about the Lemon yeah, Tetra. Yeah, Lemon Tetra is a good one. I like it. Thank you. Yeah. Allison says, can I keep Gymno Geophagus Balzani in a 50 gallon? I don't think I would. I've had them before. I had them in a 75 gallon. They can get pretty big. So uh, I think 50 gallons really pushing it long term. Big thing there too is that is my gosh, Eli is down there cleaning stuff. Oh, uh, I was like, what the that is definitely a fish that likes cool water. Be really careful there. The mistake I made is I just didn't properly uh, have their cooling seasons the way I should have, and I think I kept them too warm, and that was a problem. So uh, be careful with that one. If you're looking for something cool like that, I might go with the Geophagus Tapajos because it's you're still getting that cool iridescence, and it's going to be in a smaller package. Or even like the Bolivian Rams might be a good option. I know it's not the cool looking bulbous head sort of thing but it's still it might be a better option for a 50 second floor thanks for being a member these last 30 months really appreciate it hi jason and joanna merry christmas happy new year to you guys and all the great people here in the chat thanks for all the great info tonight well thank you for being here hanging out with thank us and you and holding down the fort as they say they being i World's best moderators. Yep, we've got them. In we've got the them right house. here. Yep. To go with all the world's best, super awesome people hanging out with us. And lurkers. Yep. World's best lurkers. Jennifer says, got to get the the ones from Sturgis every year. Well, yeah, I mean, we oh. had to do all the stops. Yeah. We did Deadwood, Hill City, um, uh, Black Hills. Uh, I'm missing the actual Sturgis location. You said Deadwood? Yep. And, uh, why am I missing one? I'm missing one Deadwood, of them. Black Hills. But yeah, we yeah that's a that's a given, man. You got to get it, you got to get them. So very cool. All right, everybody. I think I'm pretty sure it is time to call it a night because, oh my gosh, it's been a really really fast hour and a half. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you once again for everybody hanging out, stopping by. It's tons and tons of great questions. I love that. Uh, 
you had a bunch of awesome questions tonight. Thank you to everybody for becoming new members and the super chats and everything, to our moderators for doing all the awesome things that you do. Again, reminder, we won't be here next week. We will be back in two weeks to hang out with all y'all. So really appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful evening, and we will see you in two weeks. Bye-bye, Happy everybody. New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>